quite late. Uh, his starts at midnight tonight, but he's also got books for sale out there. Um, so grab some beers later on and, and see him do a marathon session. Um, also tomorrow, if you want to take your ham radio exam, that's from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. So go to the info desk downstairs if you uh, have any questions about that. Also, the artwork that you see around the HOPE conference um, was donated, but the artists are selling the pieces at the end so they don't have to truck them home. If you're interested in any of the artwork, then ask at the information desk. So uh, the big penis sculpture may be for sale. Uh, maybe a carry-on item on the uh, plane. <laughs> I, <laughs> everybody can have a good time. Um, Speaking of planes, flying has to be the most uh, invasive and annoying means of transportation these days. And every time you open your luggage and you find one of those nice little notices from the TSA that they've gone through your goods, you have to wonder what's missing. Um, there are tons of stories of interesting things like PSPs, digital cameras, suddenly disappearing uh, because the TSA can now rifle through your luggage now that we're all terrorists. Um, this gentleman decided to do something about it and find out what goes on when the TSA is rifling through your underwear. Uh, this gentleman is Algamore. The discussion is bag cam. How did the TSA and the airlines manage to do that to your luggage? Thank you. He was asking me about this idea of right before my introduction and what happened, I fly a reasonable amount. Last year at DEF CON, kind of a minor incident, zipper on my luggage got broken and it was just enough that it pushed me over the edge. I've had luggage searched, I've had luggage torn open, I've had everything that you can imagine happen to luggage except having it lost, amazingly enough. Let's make sure the video's okay here. My I like Max. I hate these damn connectors on the side for the mini DVI. They should be smacked for that. Um, so last year at DEF CON, I was standing in the hallway and I was talking to a friend said, you know, I ought to put a camera in my bag and see just what the hell are these guys doing back there? Hence bag cam. I've been in IT for 15 years. Uh, pretty varied experience across the board, Unix, Windows, development, worked at a crash test facility. Uh, as you can see up there, an evil Fortune 500 company. And I'm currently at a tech startup company right now that works on search technologies. Uh, I hold a private pilot certificate, so I have a little bit of insight into what should be going on. And in quotes there, I'm an elite flyer. That means I get screwed by the airlines more than you guys do. There's probably a couple of you there out here that have me beat on miles. Um, my girlfriend lives in Alaska, so you tend to rack up the miles pretty quickly doing those trips. Am I an expert? No, I'm not. But then again, neither are the experts in this industry. It's kind of like a lot of industries. Um, I originally gave this presentation at Nauticon uh, several months ago in Cleveland, and that's where I met Manuel, Mike, and the guys. So some of these slides are gonna be pretty similar. We're gonna run through the slides pretty quickly, kind of talk about what bad cam is, how I built it, um, some other information about it, and then get in some video that I have of it, of flights, uh, including the flight out here from Indianapolis. So why bad cam? I talked about that a little bit when I started. I hate security by facade. It's absolutely ridiculous, and we see it more and more every day. I don't understand why. Everybody wants to talk about security after 9-11. Oh my God, we've got to secure everything. We've got to be secure. Oh, let's make something up. That'll make things secure. Let, let's pretend we have security. That'll secure it. Let's make security lines longer. That'll secure it, because terrorists aren't going to wait in line. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's just insane, and it infuriates me. I think they do that just to see how many people will snap when they're standing in the security line. Kind of a, an interesting side note, while I was flying out here, I got harassed a little bit more than normal in the security line. And the guy right behind me worked for Homeland Security. He had his Homeland Security shirt on, his Homeland Security ID, and he got screwed even harder than I did. <laughs> and I just started laughing when we're like, you know, putting our shoes on and 
putting everything back into our carry-on bag and like putting the lens camera back on my camera because you know there's probably a bomb behind there or something, God only knows. And he just had this look of just hatred on his face towards the TSA. I just looked at him, smiled and said, I know how you feel. I don't think he found it too funny. I did. So a little bit of justice there. So as I've said, I hate security by facade. I really was suspicious about airport security. It just seems dubious. It doesn't seem like it accomplishes much. It seems like there's a lot better ways that you could secure an airport, secure flights. Uh, for those of you who've been to Europe, you, you can see security there. It's a lot less invasive. I think it gets a lot more done. Um, I, I don't feel comfortable unless there's dogs running around luggage. They're cheap, they're effective. Do we really need to spend millions of dollars like poking around with equipment and you know, all, all these just ridiculous things. Ridiculous is, is kind of a, a common theme in my opinion in security at the airlines and at the airport and TSA, especially given what they spend on it. And as I said before, I had one too many of these guys show up in my luggage. I started building a collection of these things. I have a stack of them at home. How many of you guys have gotten one of these? Wow. I was, I was expecting it to be like maybe a quarter to half. I'm guessing that was probably about 80% of the people raised their hands there. So how is bag cam constructed? It's a mini DVR with a built-in camera. This is actually the DVR with the camera in it that I use, and I've got some pictures of it coming up. So you can see it's tiny. It's got 128 meg of onboard memory. It's got a USB port on it, and you can also plug in an MMC card, but the MMC card either is crap that I got or it doesn't read it, I don't know what, but that didn't work. So basically it's got 128 meg of onboard memory. Um, the recordings I'll show you later were done at 128 by 128, 15 frames per second, which gives you a lot of time on 128 meg. I, I don't know what it works out to be just because you've got impact compression and, and all types of other variants, uh, but you can easily get 10 hours plus on there. Um, I decided to go with this, I considered some other options because it's solid state, there's no moving parts. I didn't want this thing going through, being x-rayed, and having stuff spinning around, churning, and also my luggage gets blown up. That wasn't really the goal. It'd be kind of cool if I could get the video of it before it got blown up. Of <laughs> course, there could probably be some problems later on. Um, so, decided it was probably best to go with a DVR solid state one. Uh, as opposed to trying to do something recording. Uh, originally, I planned on using a different DVR that had an external camera, and uh, that didn't work out. This is one I originally planned on using. Um, you can get this thing online for about 250 I think. These things aren't cheap, uh, but I really wanted to know what was going on, and it seemed like the easiest way, except it died literally the day before my planned flight for bag cam and I bought this other one and uh, I was trying to decide which one I was going to use so I decided to go with the one with the built-in camera. Um, you can see this other one's tiny as well. This is the one that I was just holding up earlier so you can see it welded in my hand there. What I ended up doing was putting this in the bag. The other thing that's nice about this is it comes with this clamshell thing that you can put it together, there's another piece that's actually in the bag there. Um, and this is supposed to be covert, so you can like walk around, nobody's gonna see you, right? Okay, whatever. Um, but it's convenient, because you can glue one of these things inside your bag, and you just put this in there, put the other one in there, it snaps together. I found out that there's sometimes turbulence on flights, you know? Well, gee, guess what happens the first flight I took with bag cam? Major turbulence, crap going all over the place, the camera actually got knocked out, so now I tape the thing in there as well as like, snapping it in there. Um, so that's something else to consider if you do decide to build your own bag cam. It's going to get beat pretty hard. And actually you kind of want it to, right? Because you want to catch the video of it. So th those are the, the most interesting things, which I, I still haven't got any really damning video yet, but it's just, it's a matter of time. It's kind of one of those luck things. You, you know, when you need to get somewhere, the flight always gets delayed. And it's kind of like if you've got a camera in your bag, I don't know if they notice it. And they're like, oh, we, we're going to stay away from that. Um, but eventually, 
it'll catch up to them and we'll get something interesting. There's still some interesting footage, but like I said, there's nothing really damning yet. Um, I haven't even had my bag searched since I put the camera in there. It, it, it's insane. It used to get searched about 90% of the time. So maybe that's what you need to do so you can actually get through and have your bag show up the way you packed it as opposed to all your clothes crumpled up and wadded up. It's like, did, did you guys go out of your way to make my life difficult? Well, we already know the answer to that one, don't we? So what I did was I cut a hole inside of a, I bought a cheap bag, um, cut a hole in the side of it. I decided to go where the luggage tag is. You probably can't see it, but there's like a little marred place up there. Um, this is, well, it's not ballistic nylon, it's just cheap nylon, I guess. So if you cut into nylon, it'll fray out on you. So if you use a nylon bag, take a piece of plastic, cut a hole in it, glue it to the inside, that way your, your little peephole out of the side of it remains intact and doesn't fray out and you don't lose your camera or something later on. This shows the clamshell that goes around the DVR. And uh, again, it just snaps together pretty straightforward there. One side of this is glued to the inside of the bag. Another nice thing about this bag is it has like lining that you can zip open so I guess you can change like the, the handle thing, you know, if you break it or whatever. Also makes it nice for hiding your camera up in there. It's a little bit, close up, little bit closer picture of the DVR. Um, this one costs about $500, but it's nice in that it's got an LCD screen so you can go through there and quickly scan through, see what you got. Um, it's got a lot of motion detection features on it. it it's pretty full featured. Uh, there's some cheaper ways of doing it, like the one that I showed earlier, I said it was 250 and you can get even cheaper. Uh, another advantage of this is it has a lithium ion battery on it that's rechargeable. Um, I've gotten up to 10 hours on it. I haven't made it all the way from Indianapolis to Anchorage. Um, so it's, it's die is somewhere in like the 10 to 12 hour range it looks like if you set it on the power savings mode. That's just another picture. If you look, there's a little hole So right there in the corner is actually the hole that the camera is looking through. One of the things to consider if you do this is camera placement. You need to think about how bags are handled so you have the best chance of getting real footage and not staring right up against the wall. Um, typically, when you have bags like this, they throw them face down. So this is the front of it, the wheels are back here. They're usually gonna throw it down like that. They do that so it doesn't roll around. So it's a pretty safe bet if you put it on the side, at least you got a 50-50 chance of looking at something decent. And it's gonna get flipped back and forth, so you do a few flights and, and you're gonna get some footage to see what's going on. At least see like your baggage handling system at the airport, see the TSA layout, see what they're doing back there, which turns out isn't much. That's why there's the wall. Except in Anchorage, I'll get to that in, in a little bit, which is kind of interesting, some of the differences between airports and how TSA conducts itself. Try to be somewhat inconspicuous. It really doesn't matter because nobody's expecting this. So people aren't like looking around your bag like is there a camera in it? And I'm sure many people here have, have done covert surveillance or whatever you want to call it. Um, and, and it's shocking just how oblivious most people are in society. And th this is just another example. So don't, don't obsess about it. What I did on this one was I went where the ID tag is on the luggage. So if you look on the side here, we've got the ID tag, it's up here. It also has the advantage of the camera has motion detection in it. So if it doesn't see any change in the picture for like five seconds, it's configurable. It'll shut off for a little while. So if you want to turn the camera off because there's something you don't want on it or whatever, you just pull the, uh, your luggage tag up on it. And of course I don't use a real one with my name on it for that. But you cover the hole up, camera's off, right before you drop the bag off, you just kind of slide it down as you're handing it over to them, camera's on. So that's kind of nice. Um, in case you know you're on your way to the airport and you have issues with things like the speed limit and you know you don't want your camera videoing you doing something illegal in case you get caught later on and then you have a camera and all types of other things. You know, or God only knows what some of you guys are probably doing on the way to the airport. <laughs> so, I mean, it's probably worse than anything I could even imagine. I probably don't even want to know with some of you, do I? 
Actually, now I'm curious. <laughs> so, The person who has the best story that catches up with me at a bar later, I'll buy you a drink. How's that? So this is the inside of the bag again. You know, it's just a bag. It's not any big deal here. Um, there's a zipper down it. Unzip it. Cut the hole in it. I have a white card back there just so you can see the size of the hole. I went pretty big on the hole just because I didn't want to crop the video off too much or risk the camera moving around. Um, again, you don't really need to obsess about this. People just aren't going to look for it. Or at least they didn't used to look for it. <laughs> so. Considerations for building your own bag cam. This is probably the standard disclaimers you see in most talks, right? You may want to seek legal advice. Don't do anything stupid. You might irritate people, so you know, if they open up and they find it, it might be an inconvenience. Probably should not make your first bag cam flight an important flight. Like if you're going somewhere to interview, don't make that your premier bag cam flight. And do not record audio. Um, if you have any questions on that, I'm not going to get into the minutia of stereotypish audio recording, but if you look at 18 USC, section 2510, uh, it covers all of that. And it, basically, don't go there. Um, video seems to be fair game, however. And it, it seems to be fair game across the board with most states. Again, might want to seek legal advice, I'm not an attorney, blah, 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 right? Um, the laws for audio recording, video recording vary dramatically from state to state. That's something else you might want to consider. Hence the, you might want to seek legal advice. Video. One of the things that I learned, make sure you have usable video you can extract before your first flight. Yeah, I, I should have checked that. Um, so, this DVR thing, it records, it's in some bastardized MPEG-4 format and there's this like crappy program that runs under Windows. It was written by a bunch of Koreans. Um, and you actually see the Korean if you go into like the resources file. There's more Korean in there than there is English. Um, it only runs at 10 or 1024 by 768. It, I mean, it, it's just, it's a piece of crap. But I thought, oh, okay, well, you know, I'll convert the video with that, no big deal, and then I'll have it in some usable format, great. So I took my first flight, get back, I've got like, oh, 50, 60 meg of data on the way out and on the way back. And I run the program, it chugs, it chugs, it chugs. A couple hours later, it like rolls over and dies. I'm like, oh, crap. So for my other presentation, I actually took a camcorder. I'm like videoing off the screen. A little bit ghetto, but you know, it, it got the job done. Um, I did some work on looking at the file format and uh, actually managed to talk to some people at Swan who make this thing. Um, or put their name on it. Like I said, it's a bunch of Korean, some Korean company actually makes it. And once I got through to the guys that are in Australia, they were helpful as much as they could be. They didn't really have much information. Um, but they, they were trying. And a friend of mine who I used to work with, uh, he works at a different company called Exact Technologies now. Uh, they make IP cameras. Helped me out as well and some of his peers. So I want to thank DSP there and Exact for le lending some of their time and expertise there. So you guys ready to see some of the footage and what actually happens back there? Okay. We'll, we'll get to that after this slide. Keep, keep this in mind when you watch this. TSA has 43,000 employees. Okay, not, not too much given the number of airports in the US, right? Their budget for this year for fiscal 2008, 6.4 billion. Basically six and a half billion dollars. It was five billion the previous year. I think it was higher the year before that. So they've blown ridiculous amounts of money. They still fail all the security tests in their own audits. So just keep that in mind. One of the first flights I took was Indianapolis to DCA, and I got some, some footage there. I couldn't really convert it uh, just because the file got corrupted, and there really isn't anything interesting going on at Reagan National. You'd think that there would be. There isn't, so I'm just going to skip that and not bore you with, like, bags bouncing around. I'm from Indianapolis, in case you couldn't figure that out from, like, my flights. Let's see. That looks decent up there, doesn't it? Can you guys see that okay? 
Cool. You want to go full screen with it? It's going to get kind of pixelated, but we'll try it here. Better or worse? Okay. So this is the ticket counter at Indianapolis. And we're, we're waiting, because that's what you do at the ticket counter. There's a lot of waiting at airports. So finally they grab my luggage. This is an American Airlines flight in case you can't figure that out. <laughs> and of course we wait. I've cut out most of the waiting because there's like hours of waiting. There's the guy's crotch who picked up the luggage and put it on the <laughs> conveyor belt. Fortunately it was close enough we couldn't see any detail on it. So now the bag is sitting on the side and it's getting ready to go down the conveyor belt back behind the ticket counter. Which brings us to the next one. And off we go. <laughs> That's going through the little curtain thing that you see there. I'll go ahead and speed this up a little bit because we're just going to be running down conveyor belts here until we get to the TSA. So you can see we're starting to move. It's kind of funny when you speed it up, it's like, it's kind of an interesting ride. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Down, down the chute we go. Yep. And, you know, it almost makes me want to get drunk and like, see if I can check myself. <laughs> but I'm sure I'd wake up in the like cargo hold and be like, oh man, this was a really bad idea later on. <laughs> it's kind of what happens a lot of times when you get really trashed, isn't it? So, if you look at this, these are the machines that they actually do the x-ray in, the background scatter machines. And that, that's what we were diving down off of. Um, and you can see one, if you look off to your left there, that's the ramp that we came down. And you can see another one in the background, scatter machines off to your right. And you can sort of see the red shirt of the TSA there. I hate the fact that the AV controls always stays on top because don't you think you'd want to look at the video more than the controls? Oh well. So this is TSA at Indianapolis. So they grab the bag after we drop down that conveyor belt, bunch of red shirt guys out there. <laughs> Working hard. <laughs> that's, that's what that six and a half billion dollars gets you right there. I think it gets you the machines more than the people, but they're both just about as effective, I think. And we've just gone through TSA screening. Wasn't that impressive? Yeah. So now they know that I'm not a terrorist, there's not a bomb in the bag because, you know, they were talking to each other and they decided that. <laughs> and so now we go down the conveyor belt system. This is more airline part of it here. In fact, that's a baggage cart that they use to take your luggage out to the ramp and get it onto the plane. I think we get a secondary look at the TSA on this one as the bag gets tossed around a little bit. Again, those are the baggage carts they take your luggage out to the plane on. And I think after we get done rotating around this a little bit, you'll see the TSA guys come back into view. We're just going around on a carousel where they pick your luggage off based on what flight it is. That was one of the things that surprised me when I did this and I started looking at the footage, is just how manual this stuff is. I figured there'd be like, you know, in, in cargo handling, if you ever looked at UPS or FedEx behind the scenes, they have automatic pushers that push stuff off. That's TSA guy. Kind of looks like, he, yeah, he was working hard there, wasn't he? That's, uh, yeah, there we go. Yep. So. There's one of the background scatter machines, I can't quite read it, but it's like in vision or something. 
Is that what it is? Um, when it was dark, when you like, right after you came down the ramp for a second, that's when it went through the machine. It wasn't in there for very long. And there was a lot of stuff in that bag too. That's another picture of it. That's the exit coming out of one, the round hole there. And uh, that, that's kind of what you can tell on the video when you do the like, whoosh, whoosh, that's when you went through there. And TSA hard at work back there. And again, a little bit better picture of the machines. There, there's just a ton of them there, and they aren't cheap, right? I'm not sure what the price is on those things, but start adding that up. So now we just keep going around the carousel until an airline employee decides that, oh, that bag needs to go on a flight that I'm covering, and they literally just look at the tags, and they pull them off. There's no scanning, there's no automation, at least not in Annapolis. And yeah, exactly. A comment from down here was, look what happened when they tried to automate everything in Denver. For those of you who don't know, complete disaster. They basically had to just destroy all of the baggage stuff and redo it all because it just didn't work. Um, I flew through the new terminal at Reagan National, uh, the new U.S. Airways terminal, which was open several years ago. It might even be close to 10 years ago now. I flew through there the first day. They had automated gate announcements and delay announcements. The computer got screwed up, and so it was announcing delays for flights that didn't get delayed. So people are showing up at the wrong gate. They're showing up like an hour late for their flight because, you know, announced the flight's delayed. And they're all like, um, you know, the airline employee, the, the gate agent's like, uh, the flight left on time. They're like, well, it, it was announced it was delayed. The gate agent's like, yeah, but it really wasn't. <laughs> there are a lot of pissed off people there. I got screwed by weather. I spent 12 hours sitting on my butt at, at National that day. So I got to watch all of it. It was funny. So eventually you get through all the conveyor stuff. I'll back that up for you. Well, I guess you didn't really miss much there. And you make it out onto the ramp, hopefully. And up the little loader we go. I need sound effects for this. You know, I, I should. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> and we end up inside the cargo hold of the plane. So that's what you see out there, you know, when you're waiting at your gate because your flight got delayed or they lost the aircraft or God only knows what they did. Or they just forgot they had a plane sitting there and I had that happen one time. They forgot to, first flight of the day out of an airport, they forgot to unhanger the aircraft. Yeah. The airline thought it was an ATC delay because apparently somebody told them that. Nobody bothered to call, nobody bothered to check. So an hour later, I'm getting irate because I flew this route all the time. It was in Pittsburgh, and I knew the plane overnighted there. So I asked them, and she said, well, it's an ATC delay. So I'm like, well, that's weird. So I called Tower up. No, there's no ATC delay. Um, so I mentioned this to her again, and all of a sudden she had that oh shit look. <laughs> So this is coming off of the plane, you know, assuming you made it there, the aircraft made it there in your luggage, all three of them. And then we get tossed around a little bit. You know, you probably don't want to watch too closely on some of this if you have trouble with motion sickness. I was like watching some of them one time when I was reviewing and I was like, man, I need to step back away from that a little. It's not as bad on the high quality video, but for some reason, I, I don't know what it is, it might just be me, on like the lower quality video that I did like the second, third generation stuff, it, it gets rather disorienting. And uh, this is a flight into O'Hare again, so this is ideally what you want to see at the end of your journey, at least the end of your journey at the airport. So we go around and around, we wind our way through. There, there was about an hour of going through conveyor belts at O'Hare to get from the plane out to baggage claim. All of a sudden I realized why you have to stand there and wait for about an hour for the bag to show up.
and plop, we go onto the carousel there and I was standing right there and grabbed it as soon as it hit the bottom I think. Yep, so now we're bouncing along as I walk out of O'Hare. This was Easter weekend. I needed to go up to O'Hare for some, or Chicago for something. And I thought, ah, oh, it's Easter weekend, you know, everybody's already gonna be at their destination. This was a Saturday flight. It, it, it was insane. And then when I flew out Sunday, the cab had to like drop me off a block or two from the airport because it was taking like two hours to get just through the drop off line there. Just a, a mess. Of course, that's kind of O'Hare for you. I don't know what I was thinking flying through there. And as I said before, my girlfriend lives up in Anchorage, Alaska. So I fly up there on a regular basis. This is one of the flights up there. That other flight was American Airlines. This is a US Airways flight here. And this is at the ticket counter again. Yeah, and you can see the bags on the conveyor belt back there. We get tossed onto it. And then off we go for our ride here. Again, this is one of the carousels. They just, they, they send the bags out to these locations and they just like rotate on the carousels um, until they get picked off by airline employees. I don't think I have any of that footage. I have some of the footage, but trust me, it's, it's boring. I think this is more entertaining if you go a little bit faster here. So here we are in one of the holding carousels. And I think that was getting ready to go into TSA's area. That might, I think that was one of the flights where I didn't even see TSA because the bag got flipped around probably and so I just had black that I was looking at for a large portion of the flight. This is a shot of bags stacked up in one of those little carts so you can see I'm kind of throwing bags in and out of there. We'll speed up to three times speed so it makes it look like he's working at a reasonable pace. <laughs> um, guess we should slow down for that last part there. I'm not even sure what that was at that speed. I think that might have been getting up into the plane there. Let's see. Yeah, not anything interesting. This is the footage of going up into the plane. So, pulled out of the cart, onto the little baggage loader, up we go, hopefully into the correct aircraft. Now, sometimes the way they load bags cracks me up. Um, we'll finish this flight up in a minute here. This also shows you some of the ghetto video that I had to do previously. This is a flight through LaGuardia. And I, I, I don't know, apparently the guy needs some more exercise. So here we are going up the baggage loader. We get tossed in here. Now th this was great, I wish I had better footage because we aren't looking at anything interesting here right now. It's almost like the guy knew that I had a camera in there and decided to help me out. So he's like loading some other bags around. And he's like, oh, his camera can't see anything. I'll fix that for him. So he turns around so he can watch him load the rest of the bags. <laughs> I appreciated that. I almost wanted to like find out who he was and, and like write one of those little, you know, I appreciate his, his diligence. <laughs> Until I saw the next part. So he's standing up here. I don't know what the hell he's saying to the, the guy down there. But apparently he, he gets a little impatient. 
right now he's just animated. So now he says screw it and he jumps out in a second here. There we go. Now the speed of the bag loading improves substantially. <laughs> he must be yelling at the guy that was down there right now. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what's going on. We'll get through this boring part here. There we go. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll drop it back down to normal speed so you can watch that again. Okay, yeah, th this isn't high speed. This is just normal speed here, right? Boom, yeah. <laughs> Screw the conveyor belt. I'm just going to lob the bags up in there. That's one of those right there where I realized, oh, that's how they do that. That's how they broke that. Yeah. It still cracks me up because, I mean, he's just like lobbing those things in there. And that's an Airbus 320, which if you're familiar with, the cargo hold is pretty high off the ground. I mean, it's up like here. I'll go ahead and speed the video back up and you can kind of watch him shuffling the bags around in here. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like he looks around. It's like, did anybody see that? Oh, no. No. It's like, yeah, somebody did see it. They pull a little curtain down before they close the, the cargo door. That way, when the luggage shifts around, they open the door up. It doesn't fall on top of them. Uh, this was U.S. Airways. And this is the uh, Northeast shuttle that they run. They run Airbus 320s that go like New York, DC, and I can't remember the other couple cities that it's like hourly service up and down through there. Um, it's actually nice to ride on, but that's not one of the flights that I would want to get drunk and check myself on, by the way. <laughs> that's why it's a bad idea. So going up to Indianapolis, I fly through Phoenix, because Anchorage is so far north, it doesn't really matter if you go several hundred miles to the west, it's still the same distance. Yep. And this is just loading an Airbus 320 here. Where this is, that's offloading the 320 that I flew on. And here we are sitting on one of the tugs probably, or it might just be sitting on the ground. You can see the other plane that was sitting there pushed back. That was probably the plane I flew in on, I can't remember. And here's loading onto the 319. The 319 is an Airbus 320. It has less seats on it, so it weighs a little bit less, so it's longer distance. And that's why I take from Phoenix up to Anchorage usually. So here we are riding around. See the sun's about ready to set as we panned across there, which will be interesting on some of the footage I'm going to show you in just a second. And off we go up into the plane.
and somewhere on the way up to Anchorage, the battery on the DVR died on me, so I don't really have any more footage of that flight. Because um, it'd be kind of interesting to see the baggage handling coming off the plane in Anchorage. This is a flight out of Anchorage. Um, this is at about, this is in the airport parking lot, taken under ambient light conditions. This was two days after summer solstice this year. This is about 1 a.m. Yeah. So there's, there's lights on, but I mean, you can clearly see things even without lights. It, it, was, it was bizarre. It's the first time I'd been up there in the middle of the summer like that. So here we are at the ticket counter. Now, one of the interesting things about TSA at Anchorage, I'm going to pause the video for a second. You're used to your bags disappearing. TSA does their magic. You've kind of seen what they do now. At Anchorage, they just have like a little roped off area right out there in front of everybody. And so you go up to the ticket counter, they tag your bag, you carry your bag over, and you hand it to them, and they just scan everything right there in front of you. And they do it efficiently. It's, it's, it's amazing. I think that's a consequence of everybody has guns up there. It, it really helps. People are nice, they're efficient, they're pleasant. They even ask you when you drop your bag off at Anchorage, when you hand it to the TSA guy, any locks or any firearms? No. So the first time, you know, I said, no. It's like, it's okay if you have weapons, you just have to declare it. I'm like, I, I don't have any weapons. He's <laughs> like, no, you just, you need to declare it, that's all. I'm like, I, I don't have any weapons, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm unarmed. <laughs> I'm the only person within 100 miles of here, I know that. <laughs> so here we are, carrying it over there, and you can see the TSA guy, again, standing out right in the open. There, there's just one of those little rope barrier things. You hand it to him. They scan it when they get around to it. Quick, easy, efficient. And here's the joyride through the old terminal in Anchorage. Since they do it out in the open, once TSA gets done with it, they put it back on the conveyor belt behind the ticket counter. So you're looking at the back of the ticket counter there. Yep, and round the carousel we go. Now that's one that would be fun. But then I wouldn't want to be stuck in the cargo hold for 12 hours. Less babies. What's that? Less screaming babies. Well, yeah, you, the comment was less screaming babies. But, but one of the advantages of ridiculous number of miles is you, you get to fly first class on the flight all the time. And up into the plane we go. And we get shuffled around. And the last footage that I have is my journey into LaGuardia last evening. So again, the ticket counter at Indianapolis, US Airways. They grab the bag, they throw it on there. And here we are taking the journey pre-TSA as opposed to post-TSA up at Anchorage. And here is TSA in Indianapolis again. You can see another hardworking TSA employee coming here. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna watch the bag there, make sure it's not a bomb or a terrorist or anything, I guess. Yeah. That, that's not paused or anything. That's, that's her real time, her standing there. <laughs> that was the bag being scanned. Well, that was the previous bag being scanned. Now this is my bag being scanned. And then off we go again.
This is them pulling my bag off of the plane. Oh, I forgot to flip the video over there. Let's. There we go. So it comes off the plane here. Slowly, very slowly. This is at three times normal speed, right? So then they get it and we wind our way through the bowels of LaGuardia. And then I actually get to claim my bag. Talk about a job that sucks, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, you can tell they really care about your bags. And there we are at baggage claim LaGuardia. And there I am. I'm grabbing my bag and off we go. So. so that's bag cam. Like I said at the beginning, I haven't really caught any truly damning things yet. I know they're out there. It's just a matter of time. Um, I would encourage others to do this. Uh, there, there are cheaper ways of doing it. You can look around and find some cheap DVRs. If you look on eBay, you can find used ones a lot of times. Um, but I will continue to video. And would people be interested in seeing video going forward on my website? Yes? yes? OK. All right. I will put that up there. Um, I don't have anything up right now, just I wasn't sure what I was going to put up. Uh, but give me a few days. It's algamore.org. Again, I don't have anything up. I have the site down right now. Uh, so just algamore.org, and it'll be up in a few days. I'll put some of this video up there, and as flights continue, I'll keep putting footage up there for you guys to take a look at. So I, I hope you found it interesting, and it gives you a little bit of insight into what goes on back there and what the airlines and what TSA are doing, or more to the point of TSA, what they aren't doing. They are doing some things correctly now. Um, they've actually started to ramp up their use of dogs. Uh, and starting to, to look at some more effective, lower cost ways of, of increasing security. Uh, they started trying pilot programs at the security lines at various airports. Um, but I have faith the government will screw it up like they usually do and they'll use the pilot programs to figure out what makes our lives more difficult, not more easy. So, again, hope you guys enjoyed it. We have a couple of questions. The yeah, mic there, so, yes. So uh, my question is, you're transporting a DVR with a camera, right. a couple of wires, a battery. Yep. And have you ever had the bag opened with their little note in it? Never. Nice. Yes. It gets worse. The last time I flew back from Anchorage, I didn't take a cool or anything up, and I decided to buy some, some fish and bring some things home that I need to keep cool. So I went to Lowe's, and I just bought some of that like high R value aluminum insulating stuff wrapped up the food in that, sealed it up, put a bunch of ice packs in there. So I had that in bag cam with a bunch of wires, a bunch of other crap. I mean, I don't know how much more bomb-like looking you could get. And I thought for sure that that was going to get searched. No, still hasn't happened. So we have a question halfway down, yes? No, we controller. Put a we controller in it. Have you ever, have you ever thought about uh, plugging a GPS device inside a bag to see where it goes and everything? I, I have. I've thought about that, and that's something I want to do. Um, a couple of future enhancements that I would like to do is to put additional cameras in so that I can get coverage in different directions so I, I don't get the blind spots if my bag ends up on the wrong side. Uh, but GPS would be really nice. Um, I'm still trying to think how to do that. 
um, because I, I'm going to need to record that information somewhere. I can't broadcast it, right? Uh, that's, that's probably a bad idea. Uh, so I, I really need to figure out how to do that, and I haven't gotten around to putting a lot of thought or effort into that. That's something I would like to do. So if anybody has any ideas or suggestions regarding implementation of that, let me know. Uh, yeah, if you have a question, you can go over to one of the mics there. So the Wiimote yeah. would get you the accelerations as those bags are thrown around. What, what's that, put accelerometers in there? Well, a, a Wiimote gives you accelerometers. They're the cheapest ones you can buy, pretty much. That, yeah, that's a good idea. Next question. Um, I think that perhaps an idea would be a, even like a larger project with like a wiki with other people doing this because every single time that I've flown, I've always had something stolen, usually cologne, an iPod, so something along those lines, and I think GPS or like a low jack in laptops and just sending laptops out and watching where the hell this stuff goes. And w with things like uh, the, the built-in camera right. in, uh, in many different uh, laptops, I think that it could be possible to actually tape people and hold people accountable for this shit. Because like, I'm personally fed up. I've flown, probably like you, way too much to the point where uh, right now I'm just like, I'm totally fed up with it. And I think that uh, those are really good ideas. Perhaps maybe something like bagcam.org? That's an interesting thought. What, what do you guys think out there? Yeah. You, you want to see that? OK. All right. Go ahead. So uh, you, you say the TSA hasn't actually opened your bag yet since you put the camera in it. And, Correct. And seen, what do you expect to happen when they open up the bag? And Do you think you'll ever see your bag again? I, I have no idea. <laughs> If you never um, see the bag again, then you never get the footage. Yeah, I mean, while I was flying into LaGuardia last night, there was a ground hold for traffic at LaGuardia. I had an evening flight, so, you know, not, not a big surprise there, right? But my bag got pulled off the conveyor belt, and it got put in the positive bag matching chunk out, out there. And then, like, ten minutes later, they announced the delay, and I'm thinking, oh, crap, here we go. This is not the flight for this to happen on. Um, but it, it was just, I don't know why they pulled it off. They did it, and they put it back on. But I, TSA hasn't noticed it, hasn't looked at it, or doesn't care. I don't know which it is. I suspect it's a combination of all three. Uh, but it, it's going to be interesting. I mean, eventually it's going to get pulled for a random search or something, and it'll be interesting. Uh, just, exactly. for uh, yes. just, just for information, there is uh, actually a GPS device, which is pretty cheap. It's something in the range of $100. It's matchbox size, and it has uh, memory for 300,000 uh, GPS trackings. It's widely configurable. I think the company is called WinTech. And it can record uh, positioning uh, at something like four measurements per second and for eight hours. And it has an internal uh, uh, battery, so you can, it's just off the shelf. And it's matchbox size, so you can hide it. Perfect. Well. What, what did you say the company name was? WinTech. WinTech? Yeah. Okay, I'll look into that. Thank you. Yes, go ahead. Hi, I'm curious about the choice of nylon for the suitcase because I've flown enough and. Uh, my soft cider luggage always gets sliced open accidentally somehow. Right. And I now just use hard sided luggage. I was wondering, uh, have you physically uh, had any of your stuff damaged? I mean... In bag cam? Yes. Not at all. But other luggage? Uh, other luggage I have. I've had the same, same experience. I've had bags with sides sliced open, smashed in, wheels broken off. Oh. Um, I, I have a, a good travel pro that has the, the really good, like, Billet machine, aluminum stuff on it, and they like broke some of that. I'm like, hey, how the hell did you do that? Did you take vice grips and like torque the thing around until you broke it? Um, so I can vouch for Delcy luggage, but yeah. So. Yes. Uh, I just want to say I recently found um, in my, I, I packed a laptop in my car in my uh, checked baggage, and uh, when I when I got my bag back, the, I found the hard drive separate from the laptop. Really? And I found the polarizing filter completely ripped up. And there was this like nice little note from the TSA saying, we inspected your bag. So wow. like, I called them, I'm like, why was this messed up? It was so padded. There's just, you would have had to hit it with an ice pick. Yeah. And so they said, oh, you know, file a claim. And they, they were just sort of laughing like as though nothing could come of that ever. So I just thought I'd share that. With you guys. Yeah, I mean, not quite as severe as what you encountered, but I had a situation like that where TSA clearly I guess this one was the airlines clearly screwed up my luggage and destroyed some stuff. And they're like, oh, that, that must have been TSA. I'm like, look, I get searched by TSA all the time. This is like one of the handful of times I didn't get the little note. So I doubt TSA did this one. 
but you know, if, if TSA damages it, they blame the airlines. The airlines do it, they blame the TSA. That's why I want to see things like bad cam start popping up. Um, I, I'd like to find a cost effective way of making it. But, sure. Last question. Um, like yourself, I travel a lot on business and I tend to travel um, internationally yes. where uh, I have to do pre-clearance for U.S. Customs. I'm, I actually live outside the U.S. Okay. Um, do you have any international experience with bag cam yet? I do not. I, I've been on international flights. I have not flown bag cam internationally. That's something that I want to do um, and I will probably do it next summer. <laughs> Do you know if there's a, a legal a legality issue? Uh, I know with you know uh, CBP, you can't take you know pictures of anything in their right. areas. Is there any uh, legality with TSA? Not that I can find, um, but we can talk about that later. Not that I can find. Okay. So it, it's there's, I'm, get, I'm getting the stop message. So no I'm gonna have to, have to no cut problem. off on your your answer, unfortunately. But the short answer is not that I know of. Okay. So thanks, guys. All right, we have a featured speaker coming up in just a few minutes, so see if you can find a space.